afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Angelinos, welcome to the regular meeting of Los Angeles City Council's Planning and Land Use Management Committee. My name is Marquise Harris Dawson. I serve the chair, as the chair of this committee. We're joined by our vice chair, Council Member Bob Blumenfeld, along uh, with Member Curran D. Price of the New Ninth. Uh, we begin this meeting as we do all of our meetings with folks who have signed up for multiple items, uh, up to and including every item on the agenda. Uh, for those individuals, we give you two minutes to speak at the beginning of uh, each meeting. And so we uh, start this meeting with Mr. Corey Schmidt first and Gloria Bum. Yes, sir. How are you guys all doing? Um, okay, so let's start this off. I'm not sure who else is going to be behind me, so I'll just forewarn everybody about the uh, public forum thing. First Amendment, you might hear some stuff that might piss you off. Um, so for item number two, uh, emergency shelters from private properties, I agree with that. Um, I think that's a smart idea. Let people help the homeless if they want to. Um, number three, in regards to fire sprinklers on all new development, um, that's also a pretty smart idea. Um, uh, number four, in regards to a seven-story building on Venice and Vermont, um, I was trying to look up stuff. I'm not sure about it. That area is, you know, could use some help in regards to development, so I'm not extremely opposed, but again, the size is huge, so I, I, don't, I don't know how it's going to affect the neighborhood. Um, iffy. Right now I oppose it. That's where I stand. Um, number five in regards to school with no setbacks. Um, I'm totally for the school. School is a great idea. Um, but the thing with the no setbacks, I think I brought that up before. Um, just bulbous, you know. I'm not, uh, just keep it clean. You know, not uh, super imposing. Um, I do like the change to number seven, though, in regards to the sign conditions, um, in regards to super graphics and uh, just general conditions of signage. Um, cool that you guys are listening. Um, and number eight, in regards to regulating ADUs, um, I didn't have a chance to look into the documents in the file um, enough, so I don't know, but right now I say yes. So, and that's everything I have. All right, uh, I don't see Gloria, so we'll go with uh, Oren Feldman and Wayne from Encino and Herman in any order. <coughs> I'm just commenting on item number eight. Do you want that now? You're Mr. Feldman? Yes. Okay, we'll just put you down for number eight. Thank you. Point of order, there are just too many white motherfuckers here today in this room, so let's try to reduce the population of the, of the sinners. Now we get to number eight, and I think this is good. I got my broken garage behind my house over there in Long Beach Boulevard in the 8th District. Born and raised in the 8th District of Baldwin Hill. So I'm going to turn that into an accessory dwelling unit, and I want to put me some little Chinese motherfuckers in there, about nine of them, and charge $400 a bed per month. <coughs> and I wouldn't have been able to do it without my Casey and Curran. I would not be able to do it. Now, Herb Wesson said, I ain't going to let you do that, but not that pimp. No, sir, my pimp, Herb Wesson, he turned my ass down. But not the other pimp, Marchese. He got too easy. He just liked to do all that shit. And then that current price, now, 
He's busy with the FBI, so we're not going to bother him today. He's busy. he got a couple of subpoenas over there. See, any time you see black folks wear those white shirts, then you know there's only two reasons why. One, they're going to a funeral, or two, they're going to fucking court. So, again, that's what happened. So, remember... And honor my keys, he for giving me my easy dwelling unit. I'm going to quote a famous rap song by a famous rapper. Ball headed ho. What you say, G? What you, what you say, G? I'll see some ball headed ho. Ball headed ho. What you say, G? Not you, what you say, G? I see some ball headed ho. He might be my ball headed ho, but my keys he helping me steal easy. Yes, sir. Herman. Your uh, singing voice exceeds your. General decorum and common sense by a good amount. I haven't said shit yet, nigga. You're talking about me. All I do is come here to talk about public comment and the nigga talk about me already. Did you know that Joe Buschiano welcomes me back? You know why? Because Joe Buschiano is a dirty, filthy fucking cop who keeps... Panhandling money. I have to be on subjects developers. within the jurisdiction of this committee. This has to do with development, and development nigga and CD15 knows how to <coughs> seduce developers for money. Not like me. I simply come here and beg, like all the other developers. See, Ridley Thomas wanted to turn his garage into a living quarter, but he used county workers. I'm not that black to do stupid shit like that. That's why Bob Bloomfield and I rock Eagle Rock Neighborhood Concert because we got black and white sisters down there that like to play with our jingles. And then in addition to all this shit regarding CD, no, let's go back to the category of exemption, a temporary emergency for homeless shelters. Well, you heard what Ben Carson said to that nigga, Eric Garcetti, our mayor. You're not going to get a dime of $80 million, you fucked up stupid asshole from the city of Los Angeles, because our Ben Carson is going to regulate that white little Jew motherfucker by the name of Erica Garcetti and show your ass a lesson. If you can't match city funds with properties, if you can't take bonds and grants and use them to fix our city homeless population, then I'm going to say it just like Trump would say it. Fuck you! <coughs> that closes general public comment. We'll uh, move through our agenda uh, and we'll try to do so expeditiously as we've, we will lose uh, members uh, over time, so we've got to get as much as we can in while we have quorum. So we'll begin with item number five, Mr. Mejia. There's a request to continue item number five to September, September 17, 2019. Yes, that's right. All right? Yes. Uh, so without objection, that'll be the order. Um, and then uh, we'll consider uh, on consent items two, three, and four, if you could read those into the record. Sure. Um, Item two, Councilman, this is a city attorney prepare ordinance. It's amending the municipal code um, to allow basically um, buildings that are city owned to be in compliance with the city's mandatory earthquake uh, requirements and to be used as temporary homeless shelters. Uh, so the, the action there being to approve the city attorney prepare ordinance. Item three is a city attorney uh, prepare ordinance again, and this one's amending the Muni Code to require automatic fire sprinklers uh, for the addition or alterations of a townhouse or a two-family dwelling. And, okay. and then item four, Councilman, this is a report from the Planning Commission. It's a vesting uh, zone change uh, for the demo of a building and for the construction of a uh, 77 tall, tall foot building with 1,527 units 
uh, located in CD1. Thank you so much. So items number two, three, and four will uh, accept on consent. Uh, without objection, that'll be uh, the order. Uh, that takes us to item number one. Um, item one is Mr. Bertoni's weekly report. Uh, Thank you, Chair Harris Dawson, members of the Planning Land Use Management Committee, Vince Bertoni, Director of Planning. Just wanted to give you um, just an update on terms of our community plan process. We're, as you know, we're updating, we're in the process of updating all 35 community plans in the city for the year 2024. Um, we've just been out recently in Hollywood yesterday at the Seek La Via to provide information about the upcoming, about the Hollywood community plan that's getting towards the end of its uh, process. We were also, in terms of the um, out, out in the communities with the Southeast uh, Valley Community Plan Update. So we're in the middle of, of the release of initial concepts and we have um, meetings that we've had, we're conducting a total of four workshops throughout the Southeast Valley. In fact, we completed two events um, and we had uh, one this past Saturday at the Browdy Building. And um, so we're really excited about the um, outreach that we've been doing and the, the engagement that we've been getting from the communities. And we have a few more that are upcoming in the Southeast Valley. Southeast Valley. We have one at um, East Valley High School in North Hollywood this Saturday and one in the Marvin Browdy Building next Thursday. So, um, so that program is moving forward and just happy to answer any questions for you. Excellent. Uh, any questions or discussion from members? Excellent. Uh, we'll continue. We'll thank the, the director and continue uh, that item. Uh, and move to item number six. Item six, Councilman, this is a communication from the mayor. It's relative to the reappointment of Ms. Samantha Millman to the City Planning Commission. All right. Uh, we'll ask our uh, commissioner to come forward and uh, introduce yourself and uh, tell us what you hope to accomplish. Uh, in this capacity as commissioner and uh, what inspires you to serve the city uh, in such a fashion? Tough questions. Hi, I am Samantha Millman. I am a, currently the president of the Los Angeles City Planning Commission. Thank you for having me here today, honorable council members. Um, what I hope to accomplish in the, my upcoming term is to find ways to continue building a more equitable, livable Los Angeles. I think that we've made great strides in figuring out how we can incentivize um, affordable housing and market rate development and I can I look forward to continuing to look at those types of incentives especially as we consider our updated community plans. Um, and what inspires me to be here honestly is my grandparents. They came to Los Angeles in hope of finding a better future for themselves and their families. And there are many people that come to our city with the same dreams. And I hope to build a city that is accessible to them. Excellent, thank you so much. Uh, any questions or discussion members? Mr. Blumenfeld. Yeah, not a question, just a, just a comment. Um, just I appreciate the work that you've been doing. You've, you've helped make the commission more accessible since you become president. And uh, I also think it's great to have somebody who has a valley connection. So I appreciate that, appreciate the work that you're doing, and look forward to your uh, future tenure. Thank you, Excellent. council member. Thank you so much. Um, without uh, any further discussion, we'll approve this item. Thank you so much. We look forward to seeing you in the full council and on the commission. That takes us uh, to item number seven, Mr. Mejia. Uh, yes, uh, councilman, item seven is a report from the city attorney. It's a draft ordinance amending the NoHo West uh, sign district. Yes. Good afternoon. This is Melina Sajin with the Department of City Planning. Um, this is the city attorney version of the NoHo West Sign District, and we just, the planning department would like to request that there be two corrections made to the ordinance that the exhibits that were presented in the um, August 19th letter to the council file be utilized instead of the ones attached to the um, city attorney report as those are the correct exhibits, and that all reference to architectural canopy sign be replaced with architectural ledge sign. Thank you, is that the uh, principal discrepancy between the two documents? Yes, that's correct. Excellent, all right, is there any other discussion on this item? All right, seeing none, uh, we'll accept this item and send it to council. Thank you all so much for your report. Uh, Thank you. Just to ensure, councilman, that those documents are provided to the clerk so that when it goes to council, they're included in the file. Yes. Okay. And as, uh, also to indicate for the record that we are uh, making the 
CEQA finding and noting that the project contains an EIR and an addendum to the EIR. Excellent. All right, we welcome uh, just in the nick of time the estimable Council Member Gil Cedillo of the First Council District to bring our committee to four members. Just did our work on the environment, sir. So now we're there you go. You're, you're just in time for item number eight. Item eight, Councilman, this is a report from the Planning Commission. It's a proposed ordinance to amend the Muni Code to regulate accessory dwelling units, uh, otherwise known as granny flats. All right, we'll have a report from staff on accessory dwelling units. Thank you and good afternoon. My name is Callie Hardy with the Department of City Planning, today presenting on um, a report back related to the proposed accessory dwelling unit ordinance or ADU ordinance. Um, the committee has previously considered this ordinance on three separate occasions. Uh, most recently we were here in June, uh, on June 11th of this year. And at that meeting the committee requested some additional options related, relating to a possible prohibition on ADU development in the city's hillside um, areas. Before I turn to that discussion, I would like to note that the department has submitted a revised draft ordinance, which includes minor technical corrections and clarifications. Um, these revisions were identified as a result of a close review with the Office of the City Attorney, as well as the Department of Building and Safety, and are intended to better ensure consistency with state law and provide greater clarity, clarity in implementation. Those amendments are not substantive in nature and do not change any of the policy intent of the provisions of the original ordinance. Um, and we've provided a track change version of the ordinance as part of the, the report back um, package for the committee's consideration. Um, so I'll turn now to some background on the hillside issue before discussing the additional policy options. The draft ordinance that was approved by the City Planning Commission includes a restriction on the creation of new um, attached or detached accessory dwelling units on properties that are located in a hillside construction regulation supplemental use district or HCR overlay for short. Um, at the last meeting the committee requested options for a more tailored alternative to be developed in lieu of that HCR restriction. The discussion of ADU construction in the hillside area has primarily centered on the need to reinforce public safety stand standards, including fire safety, emergency access, as well as construction impacts. The city has um, instituted a robust set of regulations and safety measures to address many of the concerns that are in place in the hillside areas. For example, the city's hillside ordinance places additional requirements on the construction, addition, or major remodel of dwelling units or accessory buildings that are located in hillside neighborhoods. These requirements generally go above and beyond the standards that are typically required of a single family development in other parts of the city. Um, the majority of these standards, with some limited exceptions, would equally apply to the development of ADUs um, in these areas. Um, so I'll now provide a summary of three new policy options that we prepared in response to the committee's request. By way of background, the department previously prepared several additional policy options in the attached uh, staff reports that were submitted to the City Planning Commission um, that supplement the three options that we'll detail in this presentation. And I'd also like to note that any hillside area prohibition would apply only to the construction of new attached or detached ADUs and would not apply to the conversion of any existing floor area to an ADU. Um, so the first option was requested by the committee at the June 11th meeting. This option would prohibit the construction of ADUs on lots that are located in both a hillside area and a very high fire hazard severity zone, unless the lot is fronting on a roadway that is at least 24 feet in width in front of the subject property. The 24 foot paved roadway width was identified as an alternative standard to the city's standard hillside limited street definition, which requires a paved roadway of 28 feet. Um, the County of Los Angeles recently adopted an ADU ordinance that includes a similar prohibition on ADU development in these areas. Um, and for the county, that 24-foot standard was based on um, a provision in the county's subdivision code that requires a 24-foot minimum public access road uh, for certain subdivisions. 
Um, there is currently no equivalent roadway um, with standard within the city's municipal code. However, the 24-foot roadway width might be an appropriate standard um, that can ensure adequate access while balancing the needs um, to accommodate additional ADU um, development in the hillsides. A second option would provide a more tailored set of restrictions that would only permit ADU construction in hillside areas in very high fire hazard severity zones where parking and safety concerns are able to be addressed. Those existing hillside regulations that I referenced require that all new single family dwellings and accessory buildings contain an automatic fire sprinkler system. State law, however, mandates that ADUs cannot be required to provide fire sprinklers if they are not required for the existing single family dwelling unit. For existing homes that would have predated that fire sprinkler requirement in the city's hillside regulations, the city cannot require the ADU um, to, to install the fire sprinkler. In addition, the hillside uh, regulations impose additional parking requirements on lots that front on a substandard hillside limited street. State law, however, places limits on the number of parking spaces that may be required for an ADU, including zero required parking um, for those ADUs that are within a half mile of public transit. Since many transit stops um, may not necessarily be easily accessible within our city's uh, hillside areas due to the terrain, uh, maybe lack of uh, street connectivity, it is possible that ADU development in certain parts of the, of the hillside area may contribute to increased demand for on-street parking. Therefore, one option to, to consider would be to place a prohibition on new detached or detached, new attached or detached ADUs that are located in these areas unless they provide fire sprinklers and at least one off-street uh, parking space. Additionally, it may be appropriate to impose a roadway requirement based on an existing street access standard that's um, already within the city's muni municipal code. So this option would require an ADU to front on a roadway that is at least 20 feet in width in front of the subject property um, consistent with those hillside area regulations. Um, and this provision as, as drafted in the report would not allow ADUs to seek the relief mechanisms um, that are currently available in the hillside regulations to grant deviations from the 20 foot requirement in front of the property. Lastly, the Plum Committee requested additional options that could allow for geographic based exemptions from a hillside area restriction. There is a great deal of variability in uh, the conditions that are among uh, different hillside area neighborhoods throughout the city, with some neighborhoods allowing for greater access, lower fire risk, and a generally more urbanized development pattern. Um, for this reason, if the, if the committee and the city council would like to explore a ge geographic based exemption, um, the department would suggest um, a carve out from any hillside area restriction for properties that are located within two community plan areas, um, the Northeast Los Angeles community plan and the Silver Lake Echo Park Elysian Valley community plan area. And then this carve out could be added as an additional exception to either of the two um, new hillside area policy options that were provided earlier in this report. And with that, I'll conclude my presentation. I'm joined with my colleague, Matt Glesney, and we're available to answer any questions. Thank you. All right, anything for the good of the order, Mr. Glesney? No, sir, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so we have um, a handful of public comment speakers that I'll call on and then we'll uh, have discussion amongst members of this committee. Uh, Shaina Thompson, or Shaina Thompson, Jason Douglas, Christine Ronhel, Oren Feldman, <coughs> Mike Greenspan. Yes. Shayna Thompson, thank you, sir. Thank you, council members. Um, I just came to say, to speak in um, support of additional dwelling units and movable tiny homes as being introduced to this ordinance. Thank you for reevaluating the ADU ordinances overall, but especially considering uh, tiny homes in LA because I myself want to build my own and live in it. Um, I just served seven years in the Air Force and I'd like to make LA my permanent home, but it's too expensive. And so tiny homes are a way to be more environmentally friendly, um, to be more financially conscious of what you actually need and what you actually want. Um, and I am just uh, hopeful and really optimistic that you guys uh, push this ordinance through so that I can move into a tiny house hopefully in the next year or two. That's kind of my timeline that I'm looking at, but I know that this is a process and I just really appreciate all the work that's going into it. Thank you. Good afternoon, I'm Warren Feldman. I'm here speaking individually even though I am a 
first vice president of Hollywood Hills West Neighborhood Council and chair its Plum Committee. The ban, the proposed ban on ADUs really should be adopted for the Hollywood Hills and really for the Santa Monica Mountain hillside areas, all of which are high fire danger areas. For the most part, the roads are substandard. There are so few standard width roads or even 24 foot width roads that frankly, putting the policy options into effect will simply channel developers in try into trying to cram additional space into ADUs, which they think they can prove. Uh, and you'll get contested battles all the way down the road on that. You're simply forcing parking and road with cases to take over. That's wrong. And the Hollywood Hillside Construction Thank you. District that's should your, be that's expanded. Your that's your time. Thank, Thank you. you. Good afternoon. Christine Rangel from the Building Industry Association. Today we are here to ask for your swift passage of the ADU ordinance with the option that the committee believes leaves the most room for Angelinos to exercise their right to build a unit in their backyard. The approval of ADUs is a step forward in helping to alleviate the housing crisis and will provide greater housing affordability at all levels of housing. ADUs will provide an additional housing option that is more affordable and accommodates the ever-changing demographic of housing needs for Angelinos. We like to say that we want more housing, and this is one of those chances where we can make it happen. We thank the Planning Commission, the city staff for working diligently on this to come up with solutions that would fit the unique place that LA is. Um, city staff has done an impressive amount of work, and we thank you. We look forward to a swift movement onto council. Thank you. Thank you. Mike Greenspan. Uh, Bruin butt kicking Florida Gator. Um, I recently went. I recently went to Florida, and to get to the airport, I took the flyaway from Union Station. Now, what has that got to do with this? It goes right through South Central, and what do you see in an elevated area? You look at all those single-family residences. What are those garages? Apartments. They've been that way for years. I mean, I've lived in this town 29 years, and I've seen those. Um, I guess single family resident type of apartments, you know, it looks like it's a living quarter for one person. Obviously the people aren't parking their cars there. At best, they're, if they do have a car, they're parking them on the street. Um, now why are we suddenly cracking down when they come to other neighborhoods? They've been there for years and they'll still continue there. Oh, it's just the neighborhood, I guess. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Jason Douglas. Jason Douglas, Planning Deputy with Council District 11. Uh, I want to thank the council members for your deliberation on this matter and the Department of City Planning uh, for exploring additional options to address concerns in hillside areas. As has been reiterated various times on record, the impacts of development, large or, sm or small, are exasperated in the city's hillsides. Our staff regularly field fields calls regarding hillside construction and its negative effects on the quality of life in these communities. Dust, noise and vibrations, slope instability, destruction of biodiversity, and traffic impacts are just few of the unique challenges resulting from hill, hillside construction. Moreover, due to a changing climate, new construction puts current and future residents at risk to wildfire and landslides, spelling a recipe for disaster if we continue to develop in the hillsides, uh, particularly in the presence of substandard infrastructure. Just last week, our office met with residents regarding a home that is adjacent to construction of a new single-family dwelling, detached garage, and a guest home in a hillside area. The homeowner is an older gentleman who suffered from a medical emergency several years ago that doctors at the time said it should have killed him. Poked up to an oxygen tank, he explained with each word more labored than the last how the vibrational impacts cause undue stress, paintings to fall from his walls, and shelved mementos of his wife to fall and shatter on the ground. The process of simply compacting a new access route in the, to the property and constructing retaining walls to mitigate the now unstable hillside have a direct impact on this gentleman's health and well-being. They're getting away with murder, he said to me. 
Of the options presenting today by planning, option two is the most palatable in our district as it relates to construction of new ADUs in hillside areas. Option two addresses a handful of the concerns, including a reduction of fire vulnerability and traffic impacts. However, as a reminder, there is a larger issue of hillside regulations that must be comprehensively addressed in our city. And I thank, thank you. you for your time. Thank you. Uh, we have Mr. Kleinman representing Council District 5. Good afternoon, honorable council members. My name is Aviv Kleinman, planning deputy for Council District 5. Um, council member Koretz is supportive of option 1B, which allows for a carve out for the ADU prohibition based on select community plan areas. CD5 is firm in its, in its desire to minimize habitat destruction and overdevelopment in its hillside areas, like my colleague in CD11 said. Therefore, we ask that the District 5 hillside areas continue to be excluded from allowing ADUs. Thank you. Thank you. I don't have anybody else, but. Uh, council members, my name's Emma Howard. I work for CD4, and I put my name into the speaker cards. Is it? OK, on? go ahead, Ms. Howard. Thank you. Appreciate it. Good afternoon, council members. I'm Emma Howard, Council Member Ruse, Director of Planning. Over the last year, the council member has sent me to every plum and city planning commission hearing on the ADU ordinance to speak for the safety of his hillside residents. As the last year was also the worst fire season we've seen in California and a precursor of what to come, he has held firm in asking for a return to the May 11, 2018 plum draft that prohibited new standalone ADUs in hillsides. The council member's push has led us to the lively and in-depth discussion of these issues. It pushed city staff to create and analyze many potential hillside options to allow ADUs and protect residents. His concern is and has always been the overwhelming safety issue, the risks to real people that we can't afford to take even once. Risks that expand beyond accessory dwelling units into the issue of all hillside homes on steep slopes and congested substandard streets. The ADU discussion shows that not all hillsides share the same risks. Citywide, there are at least two types of hillside. Some areas are fully urbanized, infrastructure, transit accessible with sidewalks and standard streets in good repair. And then there are the other type of hillsides. Steep areas in the very high fire hazard severity zone with high density of older homes on substandard and withdrawn streets at very high risk of severe and catastrophic fire. Hillside communities that predate comprehensive planning efforts and modern codes across our Santa Monica mountains, many of them in CD4. Wow. Councilmember Rue thanks Councilmember Blumenfield for sharing his concerns about substandard streets. Ideally, Councilmember Rue would prefer to support option one of the report before you today and press for a ban of ADUs on hillside substandard streets. The council member has called for a citywide review overlay on all city substandard streets. He called for this in February 2016 when Plum approved Council File 16198, instructing LADOT, City Planning, and the Bureau of Engineering to start develop a map of the city's substandard streets as the first phase. However, this map does not yet exist. In its absence, the council member believes that implementing option one will be challenging to implement in our district, where we see many cases go back and forth in the process in a debate over street widths. Thus, Council Member Root decided to support option two before you today. It prohibits detached hillside ADUs in, high, in very high ha fire hazard severity zones if they cannot provide on-site parking and lack a 20-foot wide street frontage. It also requires that hillside ADUs are fully sprinkled, sprinkled consistent with current LA City Code for hillside homes. As these requirements do not require analysis that cannot currently be completed, provide a nexus of common sense safety minimums, and ensure new detached ADUs are at least fire resistant to the same standards as other hillside homes. The council member believes this approach is simplest, and it will address the safety and feasibility issues that have been his concern throughout this year. He hopes his support today will ensure that the ADU ordinance can start moving forward. He also wants to point out the ADU conversation shows how desperately there's a need for citywide planning policy for our hillsides in the very high fire hazard severity zones. The baseline hillside ordinance is a good start, but it is not the end of the conversation. The very first job of government is to protect the people, and we cannot afford to forget the urgent issues of these high-risk areas. Governing is about looking ahead to prevent what could happen, not waiting until the worst does. Councilmember Rue wants to thank you for your consideration, leadership, and thoughtfulness in this process. He also thanks our constituents who have given their time to the city to speak on behalf of everyone and the staff of city planning, in particular, Arthi Varma, Callie Hardy, and of course, Matthew Glesney, who spent the last year working their way through a truly immense list of ordinance analysis and concerns. Thank you. Thank you. 
All right, um, questions and comments uh, for our Department of City Planning staff. Uh, begin with our Vice Chair, Mr. Blumenfield. Right, thank you very much, Mr. Chair, and for all the work that you and everyone has done on this. It feels like we're finally getting to a place where, where we can wrap this debate up and, and with a few quick points to, to finalize, but we're moving in a, in a good direction because we want to see more ADUs. Um, I share the concern of a number of our colleagues who've come up and spoken already about the hillside areas and, you know, particularly the fire danger that are, is clear in a lot of our hillside areas. Um, but I don't, I don't want us to do an outright ban because there are, there are parts of our hillside that make sense. For, for that reason, I'm going to echo what we heard from Mr. Rustaff and ask us to adopt option two from the planning report because it, um, what it ends up doing is it bans ADU production in areas where it's inappropriate, where we, but it allows it to happen in areas where we can ensure that there's an evacuation route and access and fire protection because at the end of the day, safety has got to be a, a paramount concern for us uh, even as we want to open up uh, as much housing as we can. Uh, two, two basic questions. One, uh, about the state legislature. That they're continuing to look at ways to increase ADU production statewide and usually that means that they're going to limit our I mean, local municipalities' ability to regulate. How would the current and pending legislation affect the ordinance that's in front of us today? Should we be worried about that? Sure. Matt Kolesny, City Planning. Uh, there are a number of uh, bills being considered in Sacramento right now governing ADUs, as has been the case for the last few years. There's four bills, uh, five bills, six bills. <laughs> um, and some are very minor. Uh, some, are, some are more uh, complex and would have a bigger impact. Um, in to it's hard to, I, I, I'm happy to go through the, all the details in, in general. Um, adopting your own ordinance does give the city um, rights to set it, sort of set its own destiny and write its own rules. Uh, many of these ordinances are, or state laws are written in a way that if you have your own ordinance, you can then control things. If you don't have an o your ordinance and are relying on state law, as we're doing today, then there would be some new, um, fairly significant uh, mandates coming from the state on ADU production. For example, if you don't have a local ordinance, you would be required to allow a third, um, which is called a junior ADU. Uh, that would be a requirement, but uh, if, if you have your own ordinance, then my understanding is that uh, is, is currently not in the law. Um, there would be an allowance for ADUs in multifamily zones in some of these state laws if you do not have your own ordinance. Uh, if you do have your own ordinance, then my understanding is that does not take effect. I'll caveat that by saying this is all being, my understanding is in reconciliation right now in Sacramento. There's a lot of uh, discussion trying to reconcile these bills and we don't know where the final bills are going to land on a number of these uh, issues. I would just say that our ordinance uh, uh, has the ability to be severed. So if something does come along and state law changes something that we can do, we would just be able to sort of uh, cross out a, a provision of, 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 the, of the ordinance that does not comply. Uh, if something comes in that we have to do, we would be able to, to uh, likely do what we're doing today, which is sort of just recognize the, the state law, issue a memo. Um, so we've thought about these things, it's, it's, uh, but um, I think generally uh, having an ordinance puts, it, puts the city in a better shape to craft its own rules than not having an ordinance. Which means timing is of the essence in order for us to get this done. Um, assuming most of them, they grandfather you in up, upon enactment, not upon introduction. A uh, second question about different but related. Uh, early in the debate, I requested a special consideration for the equine and animal keeping areas. Where, where have we landed on those requirements? Yes, thank you, Matt Glesney Planning. Uh, it's correct. The City Council, uh, early on in the process, directed staff to look at our equine keeping areas, areas where horse keeping is allowed. Uh, to essentially ensure that ADU in a backyard does not preclude a neighbor from being able to establish an equine use later uh, after the fact. That's because we have a 75-foot distance requirement between any residential structure and an equine structure. Uh, so the idea is if you put a equine or an ADU in the back corner of your property, you may prevent your neighbor from having an equine structure later. We developed regulations that are in the ordinance that basically are placement requirements. There's, there's no ban, but it does say if you are in an equine area or adjacent to an equine area, we'd like you to tuck the ADU a little closer to your main home. 
uh, a little more centered and not in the rear of your, your lot. Therefore, you'll have the least impact on your neighbor's future equine as possible. Um, I'll just, I will take the opportunity to highlight uh, a concern. We've, we've actually done some deep dive analysis in the last uh, period to look at the impact of that. How many properties are we talking about? Uh, I'll mention two concerns we've seen, uh, two potential issues. One has to do with the range of zones where equine is allowed includes manufacturing zones. Uh, we're not seeing many ADUs in manufacturing, but because the ordinance is written to uh, impact properties across the street and adjacent to anywhere where equine is allowed, anywhere across the street from an, a manufacturing zone would have these placement requirements. Um, and so there's a question of whether that's appropriate, whether that was the intent um, to capture manufacturing zones in, this, in the list of zones where we're having these special placement requirements. So that's one issue is, is our manufacturing zones, should we exclude those and just concentrate on the areas where I think equine keeping is more commonly found, which is large, uh, and, often and, hillside and properties. And I can speak to, I mean, being the, the mover of that, and it's, it's an issue for me also for District 6 and 7 and 12 to some extent and possibly others, but the, the main issue has always been folks don't want to be preempted. You don't want to have someone put an ADU and then which essentially preempts your rights to having horse or other animals. Uh, and so in as much as you're infringing on the manufacturing area, I don't think that's, that's the imperative. You just don't want the manufacturing area infringing on the rights of someone who is in a currently zoned area for equine to be able to, to lose the ability to do that because of what someone else puts on their property. So, so we, you know, we discovered the M zones is, is may, may have not have been the council's intent uh, because there's not a lot of horse keeping happening in the M zones. But uh, so that's one issue. The other issue we just wanted to highlight quickly is um, because uh, the ordinance is written to apply to uh, properties adjacent and across the street and across an alley, um, we've been looking at the issue of across the street and whether that's really an appropriate um, standard. If somebody is allowed to do equine keeping across the street and you're, you're across the street from them, um, what we're actually doing with the regulations is pushing the ADU further towards, towards the horse area uh, because we're pushing the ADU away from the backyard closer to the middle of the yard. When you're across the street, that actually has the effect of moving the ADU closer uh, to the areas where horse keeping is allowed. And so uh, that may be another thing for council to consider is removing the provision uh, where these regulations apply across the street. These, I think these regulations were developed mostly with regard to adjacent, behind you, across an alley. We don't want to affect people in the backyard. Um, and so when we wrote the language adjacent, adjacent often means across the street. If the council would like, you can clarify that across the street um, is not what we're trying to capture here as well. Those are just two issues. Can't, can't all that be fixed by, by just dealing with what the adjacent area is? If, if, if you're on the one side and there's not an equine uh, issue, you know, if you're not zoned for equine on the opposite side, then it, you don't need to worry about the, the distance on that side, right? I mean, why, why that doesn't, it didn't seem like it should be that hard of a fix, but maybe I'm missing something. It's a simple fix. We could just, we just, we've defined what we mean by adjacent. Today it means across the street from an equine keeping area, as well as across an alley and obviously touching. We could just remove across the street and then we would still capture lots that are adjacent and across an alley because that's behind you but we could just remove uh, the words across the street if council did not want to apply those across the street. All right, well, I mean, maybe I'll talk with my team about that. So anyway, I'll, I'll, um, I appreciate that and, and, would, and would look forward to working with you on a fix uh, to make that more streamlined, but appreciate the fact that, that, and I want everyone who may be listening who's in those zones who is very concerned to know that that fix is in the underlying ordinance and the, the equine zones are, are protected and folks will not be preempted uh, by someone else's actions with, it, with an ADU. That being said, I, I also just want to reiterate that I'm going to like to request that we, we do incorporate option two. And with that, I'll turn it back to the chair. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Blumenfeld. Thank you for your uh, attention to uh, detail in this matter. I want to make sure, uh, before we hear from the city attorney, Mr. Cedillo, uh, if you have comments, or Mr. Price. I think I'm uh, waiting until we do our motions. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. I just want to thank staff for their, their hard and ongoing work uh, on this topic of ADUs, something that really impacts everyone, and so we appreciate, uh, appreciate your efforts uh, and the uh, suggested technical corrections to 
um, make these uh, rules and rigs a lot more uh, more usable. I think we've created the flexibility in and, and, and certainty to the extent possible uh, that really does uh, make a difference. And so I, I'm prepared to accept these uh, corrections and, and I look forward to some kind of a report to Mr. Chairman, periodic report on, on the status and, and on the frequency of use uh, of this ordinance and how we can process. improve it. Um, but I would certainly uh, be supportive of option two at this point. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Blumenfeld. I just I was just thinking and talking to my staff about what you were saying, and, and I'm, I'm comfortable with if you want to move forward in terms of when you go to form and legality, dealing with the technicality that you said on, on the, the horse issue uh, in terms of the cross the street as, as you draft it, and I'm, I'm comfortable uh, putting that forward as, a, okay. as an option for us. All right. Going once, going twice, Mr. Shadil. Anything on horses? Hmm? Are we ready for the motion? Not yet. Okay. Uh, we want to hear from the city attorney. Thank you. Terry Kaufman, Macias City Attorney's Office. Um, on policy option two, I just wanted to get some clarity from the um, committee that um, on the issue of a ban, unless uh, fire sprinklers or the parking is um, available, is it the intent of the committee? If those provisions were, for some reason, struck down, the sprinklers and the parking, is it the committee's intent to then be left with a ban or to be to allow the ADUs everywhere in these areas? From my perspective, that it should be a ban and then it would come back to us and we would look at, uh, if you know, if they were to strike out the major provisions there, specifically like the distance of the street being 20 feet, that's then you're potentially in, a, in an area that's a fire danger. And this is all about fire danger. So I'd say it, it defaults to a ban, but we would certainly, if that were to happen, we would take it up again and look for another fix. Okay. Okay, thank you. All right, so clarity. Anything else uh, from Department of City Planning on this? All right, I think we're ready for a motion, Mr. Cedillo. Um, we want to request that the city attorney prepare and present the ordinance proceeding with option, option number two. Oh, important question to staff. Uh, I, I, we need to confirm that the options that we talked about today, including the one that we just discussed, are consistent with the CEQA that we prepared for this ordinance. I'll defer to city attorney, but I believe they are. They're substantially consistent. Did, yeah, you did the analysis, so you need to be able to state if, if it's consistent. Arthi Varma, Department of City Planning, yes, it would be consistent with the CEQA analysis we prepared. All right, so it is consistent. We got that. And uh, will this ordinance exempt property owners currently in plan check from the park fee? Thank you for that, uh, Matt Glesney Planning. Uh, yeah, this is an issue um, that has come up and is addressed uh, partially in the ordinance. I'll just try to summarize quickly. the. The Parks Fee Ordinance, the Quimby Fee Ordinance that uh, was adopted, uh, I believe, two years ago, includes an exemption from the Parks Fee for ADUs, but only ADUs in single-family zones. And that was written that way because that was the only place ADUs were allowed three years ago when that was drafted. That's created a situation where ADUs being developed today in non-single-family zones, say in an R2 zone, are being hit with the Parks Fee. It's about six or seven thousand uh, dollars. That was not the intent of uh, the original drafting. So we, we've, the ordinance includes a, uh, a straight exemption for all ADUs from the parks fee. Uh, however, what we've discovered in talking with our friends at Park and Recs and Building and Safety is that the way the language is currently written would require uh, people that have already paid their plan check and gone through the process, built their ADU, um, but maybe haven't have held off on paying their parks fee because they've, they've seen this ordinance coming and they, they're not thrilled about paying it. They wanna wait for this ordinance to come where they would now be exempt. Uh, Building and Safety has, has told us that they would be required to go through plan check again, pay you know X amount of dollars, go through, review the plans all over again. In many cases, these are built ADUs. Uh, so there could be language that could actually be more straightforward in terms of grandfathering everybody who's, who's gone through plan check without having to go through plan check again. So um, I believe we have uh, prepared language that would, that would be a more straightforward grandfathering provision. Uh, if the committee and uh, council members so wished. 
Mr. Lundfeld? No, I mean, I, that, that makes sense. I don't like the idea of sending people to plan check twice for the same project. All right, so we'll uh, include that language uh, in a motion uh, that asks the city attorney to prepare and present an ordinance proceeding with option number two, uh, which uh, prohibits ADUs in areas identified as both very high fire hazard severity zone and hillside. With the exceptions of conversions or uh, ones that meet the following include all the following includes automatic sprinkler system, provides one off street parking space. Uh, in front a 20 foot wide roadway after improvements and uh, dedication. Uh, also uh, that we preclude M zones from the equine provisions and define adjacent as equine lots sharing a property line along the side yard, rear yard or across an alley from an adjoining lot but not including parcels across the street. Yes. Uh, Terry Kaufman, Messiah City Attorney's Office. Um, I'd like some clarification on the park fee issue because I don't think that was part of the ordinance that was presented, so there's a mm -hmm. notice issue there. Is that right? That's correct. The, this is not uh, in, as part of our report. Um, so then I, I'm not sure it can be added. This is Kevin Keller, City Planning. I think uh, this item was part of our uh, determination of the grandfathering status of existing permits. I don't know if this is a clarification that requires re-notice or not, but we could look into that very quickly. It seems like it's a clarification since it was discussed in the report. Yeah, I mean, it's fairly small. The, the, the exemption from the parks fee is in the ordinance. Uh, what, what we're requesting is a you're minor. Gonna, you're going to make it available to everybody, though. You, uh, just, just without going say. through a plan check process. So it'd be, it'd be uh, uh, okay. Well, we can we can look at it if it's if it's in there and it's not a problem, we can put it in. Otherwise, we may have to come back. That's All right. So we'll put it in, and if it's a problem, we'll come back. I I uh, want to complete uh, reading the added language. Uh, also, that we add a subsection to the effective date section under section twelve point three three, parks and land dedication that states any accessory dwelling unit project where the park fee has not been yet paid and a certificate of occupancy has not been issued by the Department of Building and Safety prior to the effective date of the accessory dwelling unit ordinance shall not be subject to a park fee. So that uh, specifies uh, what we just discussed. Uh, so uh, that's the motion before us. Do we have a second? Uh, and Councilman, sorry to interrupt you. In addition, the technical corrections that planning alluded to yes. at the beginning. Yes. yes, including the technical session. So there's a motion. Has it been seconded? Second. Second. Uh, Mr. Cedillo. Now is the time to add the uh, exemption to that motion, which uh, would state that uh, it exempts uh, the lot, is unless the lot is located within the boundaries of either the Northeast Los Angeles Community Plan or the Silver Lake hyphen Echo Park hyphen Elysian Valley Community Plan area. So those are the exemptions to the broader plan. All right. So there's been uh, an amendment. So to, to clarify, Councilman, those are going to be carve-outs, those two areas that the Councilman mentioned from option two. Is that right, Councilman? The, 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 the communities of Northeast and I think you mentioned Echo Park, those are going to be carved out from option two. Correct. Yes. Just wanted to clarify that. From the motion, correct. They're, thereby allowing ADUs in those community plan areas. Yes without the provisions enumerated. Correct. All right. All right. So uh, there's a motion. Uh, I'll give a second to that. Um, any discussion on it, members? No. Uh, so we'll accept that uh, motion and we'll move the entire matter without objection. And it goes to city attorney council. Yes. Yes. And then it'll come back to us. Yes. All right. Thank you so much. Uh, can you confirm, uh, Mr. Mejia, that that concludes our regular business for today? Uh, that concludes our regular business, Council. Excellent. We're adjourned. Thank you so much.